Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shankar De. Welcome to the second session of NEET PG Recall Question Discussion, question number 11 to 20. So starting with question number 11, a 20 year old female working in a rural school got rice water stool and hypotension. The pathogenic organism acts through which receptor? As you can see, this is a typical case with rice water stool. So this is a case of cholera. As you know, cholera acts via cholera toxin. So cholera toxin binds to which receptor? All of you know, it's bind to GM1 ganglucide receptor. So the answer is GM1 ganglucide. So cholera toxin acts via GM1 ganglucide receptor. Here is the details of cholera toxin. Cholera toxin has two subunits, subunit A and B. Subunit B binds to GM1 ganglucide. So this is this was the question asked. Cholera toxin binds to GM1 ganglucide and subunit A causes ATP ADP ribosylation, which causes increased adenylate adenyl cyclase activity, causes increased CAMP. So this cycling adenosine monophosphate causes massive diarrhea by electrolyte loss from the from the intestinal epithelium. This causes right typical right water stool rice water stool that resembles sometimes arsenic metal poisoning. So this is about the cholera. Cholera acts by cholera toxin which acts through GM1 ganglucide. So this is the answer for this question. Next coming to question number 12. Primaquine given to a patient then it develops features of hemolysis. So following primaquine therapy features of hemolysis, the deficient enzyme in this patient is belong to which pathway? So the question asked is deficient enzyme belong to which pathway? So the deficient enzyme belong to which pathway? G6PT deficiency where the enzyme is deficient is G6PT glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase because whenever the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase when there is oxidative stress there will be hemolysis because glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme is the most important enzyme for HMP pathway and HMP is the major source of NADPH this NADPH maintains the integrity of RBC by preventing the hemolysis whenever this glucose 6-phosphate enzyme is deficient this causes more lysis of the RBC or hemolysis so this is the case of G6PD deficiency so the deficient enzyme is belong to which pathway the deficient enzyme G6PD is belong to HMP shunt pathway one of the important enzyme for HMP shunt pathway so G6PD or glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase so what are the clinical features of G6PD deficiency anemia like pallor, episodic jaundice and hemoglobinuria with some oxidative stress and on lab features decrease hemoglobin retic count, increase unconjugated bilirubin along with two cells specific cells like bite cells and hinge body can be seen and what is the treatment of this disease? Avoidance of the oxidative stress and drug causing hemolysis. This is usually self limiting disease. So you have to avoid pimacroin and other drugs, other hemolysis. Uh, hemolytic drugs for this disease so the answer is HMP shunt pathway the deficient enzyme belong to HMP shunt pathway coming to question number 30 patient with upper abdominal pain one image was given this is a typical image of gas under diaphragm as you can see here is the presence of gas under diaphragm so it is also known as reverse mustache sign and also this is typically commonly known as gas under diaphragm suggestive of pneumoperitoneum. so what is the definitive treatment for this case answer is resuscitation followed by resuscitation and exploratory laparotomy so this is the definitive treatment for peptic perforation or any like small bowel perforation so exploratory laparotomy to repair the perforation site laparotomy so the answer is Resuscitation and expiratory laparotomy is the definitive treatment for this case with a patient present with upper abdominal pain with gas under diaphragm in chest x ray suggestive of uh, visceral perforation. Next, coming to question number 14 a child with exercise intolerance and the uh, macardal disease was suspe suspected. Which is the deficient enzyme in this case for macardal disease? As all of you know, 
मैकाडल डिजीज इज नाथिंग बार वन अफ द ग्लैकोजें स्टोरेज डिसऑर्डर सो अल अफ यू नो द लिस्ट अफ ग्लैकोजें स्टोरेज डिसऑर्डर सो सी दिस लिस दिस इज ग्लैकोजें स्टोरेज डिसऑर्डर टाइप वन इज भन गियर की डिजीज सो व्हाट इज द डेफिशियस इंजाई फर भन गियर की डिजीज इट इज ग्लूकोज सिक्स फसफेट सिक्स फसफेटेस नेक्स्ट व्हाट इज टू इज टाइप टू इज पम्पिस डिजीज फर पम्पिस डिजीज इज सी एसिड लाइपोजोमल वन फोर ग्लैकोसाइटिस फर कोरिस डिजीज इट इज डि ब्रांचिंग फर एंडारसन डिजीज टाइप फोर इट इज ब्रांचिंग एंजाइम डेफिशियंट फर मैकाडेल दिस क्वेश्चन आस्क वॉज अबाउट मैकाडेल द एंजाइम डेफिशियंट इज मासल ग्लैकोजें फसफोडाइलेस एंड फर हार्ट डिजीज इट इज हेपाटिक ग्लैकोजें फसफोडाइलेस सो इन दिस केस क्वेश्चन वॉज अबाउट मैकाडेल डिजीज सो द एंसार उल बी मासल ग्लैकोजें फसफोडाइलेस सो एंसार इज मासल ग्लैकोजें फसफोडाइलेस डेफिशियंट एंजाइम इन मैक आर्डेल डिजीज चाइल्ड प्रेजेंटेड उथ एक्सारसाइज इन टलारेंस एंड मासल पेन व्हाट इज दिस इमेज दिस इज वन अफ द इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन अफ लास्ट नीट टू थाउजेंड टोटी सो दिस इज नाथिंग बट टिपिकल इमेज अफ दिस इज द नाथिंग बट टिपिकल इमेज अफ एज यू कैन सी हर इट इज रिटेन सिस्टोमेट्रोग्राम सिस्टोमेट्रोग्राम Uh, all of you know about the laplace law this is nothing but image of systometrogram graphical presentation of systometrogram see here systometrogram is nothing but measure of response of bladder to being filled and this procedure is called systometry is the method by which this pressure volume relationship bladder is measured measured so this is the relationship of the pressure and volume this relationship is measured by this method systometry and this graph is called systometrogram and the compliance compliance of the bladder is calculated next coming to the question number 16 this is one of the important question one ulcerated nodular growth of 0.3 cm is noted near the medial canthus of the eyeball of a patient and biopsy of the nodular Our growth is showing this type of lesion. So, what is the diagnosis? As you can see, this is typical palisading pattern. So, this is typical palisade pattern seen in which type of carcinoma? One type of carcinoma, also known as rodent ulcer. Yes, right. This is basal cell carcinoma. So, see, this is my note from E Guru Kul app provided by Doctors Bhatia Medical Coaching Institute. Those who are wishing to, oh, those who are wishing to. install e gurukul app to download the app from my description link this link has been given on the description as you know e gurukul is one of the best coaching platform for neat pg so let's learn about the basal cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma is also known as rodent ulcer or uh, it risk factors includes UV radiation, arsenic, aromatase, coal tar, and etc. And clinical features: edges of ulcer are beaded and rolled up. This is the ulcer, basal cell carcinoma. And on microscopy, it shows palisading pattern. And this is the typical palisading pattern in microscopy. So this is basal cell carcinoma. So the answer is basal cell carcinoma. Next question is question number seventeen. A pregnant woman on the third day of the postpartum period is feeling depressed and tearing up and fatigue. What is the diagnosis? This is typical case, straightforward question. This is a classical presentation of postpartum blue. All, all of you know about the postpartum psychotic changes. There can be three type of psychotic changes following delivery. So these are three types. One is postpartum blue, second is postpartum psychosis, and third is postpartum depression. Postpartum blue is usually gradual onset within ten days. So in this case, question was about day three. The woman was feeling depressed, tearing up, fatigue. So this is a, the question asked to us. Postpartum blue seen in fifty to sixty percent cases. The mildest type of psychotic changes after pregnancy, and the treatment is nothing but reassurance or care is. Only required for this type of psychotic changes. So the treatment is reassurance and care. And second type postpartum psychosis is very dangerous. This is severe type. Uh, maybe injurious to bo both injurious to both mother and baby. This is sudden onset occurs within 10 to 14 days and usually seen in less than 1% cases. And in this case, you have to start anti-psychotic drugs. So this is a serious. Psychotic changes after delivery, and in postpartum depression is usually seen after four to six months of delivery. After four to six months, 
and this is also seen in 10 to 20 percent cases and treatment is for depression ssri selective serotonin receptor in reuptake inhibitor so this is like fluoxetin so this is typical case of postpartum blue pregnant woman on the third postpartum day with depress depression and fatigue next coming to this is the watch another image based question what is this image this is the image of typical image of thromboelastrography so this is thromboelastrography graph so thromboelastrography is nothing but one of the techniques by which you can predict any deficiency or uh, uh, normal or abnormal pattern of different clotting factors so this is the thromboelastrograph representation here you can see this graph represent this part clot formation and this part represent fibrinolysis and this is the normal thromboelastrogram pattern this is a normal pattern this image is normal next followed by second image if there is anticoagulation deficiency the image graph will be like this then if there is platelet inhibition the graph will be like this and this is the graph for hyperfibrinolysis and this is a graph for hypercoagulability so this is the assessment of uh, abnormality of coagulation factors in our body so this is one of the uh, best investigations to know the status of uh, abnormality of coagulation in our body thromboelastrography so this is the graphical presentation of thromboelastrography thromboelastrogram next coming to question number 90 that this was also image based question this is nothing but bladder extrophy so this is nothing but congenital anomaly this is bladder extrophy also known as ectopia visayasi so let's see here this is my dbmci dr Bhatia e guruku lab notes so x and bladder similar image see this image extrophy bladder ectopia visayasi is a rare condition more common in males than females lower midline defect you can see the lower midline defect here anterior abdominal wall and anterior wall of the bladder is not well formed this is known as extrophy of bladder complex usually presents with broad and short penis anteriorly placed anal canal separation of pubic bones and bilateral inguinal hernia so this is bladder extrophy or ectopia visayasi next coming to question number 20 following road traffic accident a patient one patient presents with increase in respiratory rate increase in pulse rate and hypotension and checks test is showing this type of features so what is the management so as you can see here in here you can see the hyperlucent lung is as you can see this is more blackish lung or hyperlucent lung without any bronchovascular marking and you can delineate the collapsed lung border so in this case presence of air inside the pleural cavity following rta with obstructive shock syndrome so this is nothing but typical case of tension pneumothorax so what is the management of this case needle thoracostomy followed by definitive management is intercostal chest drain so in this case management will be intercostal chest drain first needle thoracostomy followed by intercostal chest drain for this tension pneumothorax so i have discussed question number 11 to 20 in the next video i am going to discuss question number 21 to 30 so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe my channel dr shankar De. thank you for watching this video